Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for advanced English learners. You can download the PDF transcript of this story as an all-access Patreon on our Patreon page. Ready? Let's get started. C1, C2 English Story Penningly Grey and foreboding, the desolate landscape unfolded before her. Charlotte stopped abruptly at the imposing iron gates, encased in rust, surrounded by dry stone walls, weathered and decaying in the bleak terrain. This was the entrance to the vast estate of Penningley. On the ridge stood a manor house, neglected and beyond repair, in ruins, after being abandoned nearly a century ago. The land in which it stood was rugged and barren, save for a wooded area near to the crags. The house and estate were isolated from the villages which nestled in the valley below. For many nights, Charlotte had been dreaming of this place. Her fitful sleep had robbed her of the rest she desperately needed. For so long, she had tried to forget what happened at Penningley. But it was etched into her subconscious, engraved on her memory forever. She knew now that she must return once more. Charlotte's mind wandered back to the events which had led to the tragedy. Few experiences would be more traumatic. It was eight years ago when Charlotte first met Robert. She had been invited to a Halloween party at her friend Lucy's house. When she arrived, the party was in full swing. Many of the guests were outside on the lantern-lit garden, huddled around a small bonfire which kept them warm in the autumn evening. Lucy was cooking on the barbecue and talking to a very handsome man. Charlotte made her way across the wide lawn to Lucy, who introduced Robert. Charlotte was immediately drawn to his friendliness, warmth and charisma. He seemed to be such a lovely person, inside and out. They spent much of the evening talking, finding out about each other and enjoying the wonderful party. At the end of the evening, they exchanged numbers and also arranged to see each other the following weekend. Charlotte looked back upon this time in her life as being so happy and carefree. She and Robert met regularly. They were always happy to see each other. Robert's passion was rock climbing. He wasn't an expert, he said, but he loved the challenge which was both physically and mentally demanding. His enthusiasm was catching. As Robert introduced Charlotte to his favourite activity, she began to really enjoy the arduous but stimulating climbs, which gave her a feeling of freedom. Throughout the autumn and winter, Charlotte and Robert would go to the nearby Penningley estate to enjoy practising their climbing on the crags. It was a perfect setting. Past the house and beyond the woodland, the rugged rocks were ideal to scale up. It was exhilarating. To reach the summit without falling was thrilling and exciting. Weather permitting, they enjoyed as much time as possible at Penningley.
as winter ended and springtime approached, Charlotte and Robert began to enjoy walking through the ancient woodland before eagerly sprinting towards the crags. Their excitement for climbing never diminished. The weather was unseasonably warm that year. They often stopped on their journey to admire the scenery. Beautiful bluebells, little yellow primroses, and crocuses of white, lilac blue, and orange were growing in abundance. There was a sunlit clearing where cherry blossom and crab apple trees grew, their heady perfume scenting the air. It was stunning. Often they would picnic on the luscious green grass. Sandwiches, sausage rolls, pork pies and butter scones were eaten as they drank ice-cold lemonade, refreshing and cooling after their walk. How they enjoyed those times! Spring turned into summer and autumn was upon them once more. Charlotte's climbing ability was much improved. During this time, she had built strength, agility and endurance, now able to keep pace with Robert. The couple gradually became closer, respecting and loving each other deeply. They were looking forward to a bright future, together. On the upcoming Halloween, the couple decided they would go rock climbing. It would be a wonderful way in which to celebrate one year together. They decided to walk to the crags by midday, which would give them plenty of daylight time, as they were again invited to Lucy's party later in the evening. How life had changed since the previous year's celebration! Charlotte and Robert rambled towards their goal. As they neared the crags, the harsh, ragged surface of the rock face was upon them. They quickened their steps, eager to scale the crags. Using all their physical strength, they negotiated a particularly steep climb to the summit. As they neared their goal, Robert stretched out towards a rugged mass of rock, but lost his footing on the precarious precipice. Tumbling to the rough ground below, a cluster of unstable rocks came careering down onto his fallen body. A blow to the head rendered him motionless. Robert was dead. After multiple nights dreaming of that fateful day and of Robert's still form, Charlotte's utter devastation is overpowering. Wrapped in a debilitating and lonely grief, she has returned, called by an unknown force. The creaking gate scrapes the mossy gravel as Charlotte hesitantly pushes it open. She walks through the dead grass and slips on the first fallen leaves. There is a distinct smell of decay in the murky, grey countryside. Heading towards the crags, she reaches the small wood. The bare trees are clustered together, their low-hanging branches brushing Charlotte's face. Flitting shadows cross her path as she negotiates the damp track. Beyond the woodland stand the crags, majestic in the barren landscape and devoid of life. Charlotte trudges towards them, apprehensive and fearful. What is beckoning her towards the harrowing scene of Robert's death? It is as if she is being drawn there by a magnetic force. Charlotte is lured towards the area of tragedy. A glimpse of a shadowy spectre chills her to the bone. Then realisation. It is Robert. 
He is urging her to come to him. Charlotte is overcome with emotion. A scene of fatality grips her. The shadow of his ghost moves between the trees, her nerves on tenter hooks. She faces Robert, her heart full of tenderness. Charlotte is able to relay to him that she will not yet join him in death. It is not time. With a heavy heart, she turns, retracing her path. Charlotte continues forward to her life, the life she will live fully until her unquestionable reunion with Robert. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. You can find the link to our Patreon in the notes below. See you soon.